Hey, what's happening? This video clip right here is one of my favorites. There's not a lot of flickering or warping that's often associated with AI generated videos. And with that, I thought today I'd take a little bit of time and walk you through the step-by-step -step process that I've developed when it comes to AI video and really growing a YouTube channel, creating assets that will allow you to stand out and really get some great results. And that process begins by identifying a specific style of art that you wanna base your videos and imagery around. For example, in my last video, I went with the colorful and imaginative world of Pixar. Another option would be the classic charm of Disney. Or maybe you wanna go a bit edgy with some of the dynamic and vibrant colors of anime. Or perhaps you wanna go a bit more gothic or you're into expressionism, which I think is so amazing. The idea is that we're really gonna focus on capturing the emotion of the characters beyond the physical world that we live in. And Studio Binder is an excellent resource that allows you to identify all these different styles of art that you can then base your imagery and thus videos around. Once you've got your art style, it's off to generate imagery. You can use Dolly 3 or Mid Journey, or if you wanna go free, check out leonardo.ai. These are all wonderful resources. For me personally, I'm spending a bit more time with Dolly 3, but fact of the matter is sometimes Mid Journey will produce better images around one specific art style, other times it'll be Dolly 3. So it's really about testing and trying different things. But what does matter greatly is your prompt and how you really communicate what you want with these tools. Now the way I generated these is I always begin with a prompt that mentions 16 by nine and then the art style. So 16 by nine image and the classic Gothic style often found in 50s, 60s and 70s horror movies, reminiscent of hammer horror, etc and that's what helped me generate these particular images i also mentioned sometimes things like grayscale as far as the color palette goes when i started doing that i really enjoyed and loved the imagery i got back when i was striving to generate images based on the pixar style I noticed when I asked for simply Pixar, I got a lot of different varied colors, but by focusing on grayscale and then also mentioning with a slight blue hue, I got these images back. Furthermore, I was able to edit these images just a bit to really increase the blue hue or saturation in these images. And then another trick that I've been developing and, and using is simply to color in some of the imagery with red to represent YouTube. And that's one of the things you can think about. I'll talk more about that as we continue, but this is basically how I've built out my prompts to get really specific imagery back. And then there's one other thing that I've done when it comes to prompting and will totally set you apart from all the other AI generated art. And it's about really connecting with your beliefs, your values, the things you're passionate about, your hobbies and so on. For example, I've had two poodles for a long time. I don't anymore, but I've mentioned them so many times that it's become part of my brand. So sometimes I'll ask for imagery back that's based on a poodle and I totally love the look. Nobody has ever seen anything like this. In fact, I got a comment on Facebook that says, boy, this is so Brian G. Johnson. And this is a great way to really separate yourself from everybody else. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna get images back. Some of them are gonna suck. Sometimes you'll be frustrated this was such a great image but my gosh the fingers are horrible and yet I still got this image back just moments later which is really good as well so it's all based on how we move forward I also want to mention the mistakes that these tools will make sometimes with words and phrases if that's the case again one of the things I've done is simply go back to my images I use iPad I use Canva I erase the wording and replace it with my own in fact I just did this with a comic strip and it was so fun this is another image image where I incorporated things like standing out in the uh, the verbiage and I think this is going to make for a really great thumbnail again we've got poodle uh, scribbled and I've always added doodles and scribbles but there's something interesting about this particular image that is based on another AI tool I want to mention it's too expensive but I found some ways to reduce the cost magnific is what it's called and it's based on upscaling images 
but it does so in a creative way where there's hallucinations and they happen on purpose. That whole hallucination is basically where the AI go, goes crazy and does like the things with the fingers. But we're able to control just how much it hallucinates. I can designate, hey, stick to this image. Don't go off the rails, but, but use a little bit of creativity to come up with something better. And that's what you see here. Notice that the word poodle looks a lot better. It's more create, not more creative, just I think the doodle looks better. And it's because I ran it through this tool, Magnific, that upscales the particular image, which furthermore adds more detail to the image, which gives us a lot of flexibility in editing. I can do something like punch way in and I don't lose any quality because this is actually an 8K image with tons of resolution. So that's another option you may wanna consider. In fact, here's an image of Laura Croft. It's less than a pixel. In fact, it's one-tenth of a pixel. I used this tool and got this back. And that shows you what's possible with this particular tool. The next step is to animate these particular images. And this is where it gets really fun. But again, the more you know the limitations of these tools, the more you're able to prompt in a very specific way will only increase the chances of you getting something back you really like. For example, if I ask the tools to have a character turn and look in a certain direction, oftentimes it's too much and there's a lot of warping. Yet look at this particular video clip and you notice the only animation is in the pencil and the drawing and that's enough to give it character and, and interest and draw people in and there's no morphing at all. So that's a, a really smart way to go. So what I do is I've been using Pika, which is fantastic. You can even use it for free. There will be a watermark and you don't have access to things like upscaling, but it's pretty darn good. And then I get really specific with what I want. The idea is I really give it simple instructions to animate things other than characters, like this particular flag, like the pencil, like someone writing in their studio, and even this clip, there's a little bit of morphing in the face, but I think it's okay to use in this regard that you're seeing here. But this is the general idea. There are a few other tricks with Pika that you can leverage. Is one, you have the option to specify how much motion you want. The more motion you ask for, the more likely you're gonna get back some morphing or flicker or things you just don't really want. So that's something that I've really passed on myself and I've been happy with my results. Another thing that I've done is I've played around with some negative prompting, which you can do right in this box here. But I found when I add a bunch in, again, it actually degrades the output. So I found just keeping things really simple with a short specific prompt is what works best for me. Now, a couple things about Pika, you can upscale your images on a free account, but there are several tools available that will allow you to extend the quality of the videos you generate. One is based on slowing down the footage and literally building out additional frames. In fact, if you look at the video here, I processed this with a paid tool, Topaz Video AI. It's expensive, but one of the things it does is it upscales the images. Furthermore, it reduces the flicker often associated with AI generated video, and it can even slow down footage and the result is beautiful. In fact, this is a clip of me in the snow and notice how beautifully slow the snow is falling. That's because I've actually slowed the footage way down and it still looks pretty good and pretty natural. And then there's one last thing to consider and that is how you edit this all together and how you really approach YouTube and video content creation. Check out the video on the screen to dive deeper. I'll see you there and when you click and watch, You'll feed a poodle. I've got two poodles and they're hungry. You dig?